Hey, toy fans and toy makers and general toy toyish, 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 toyish people. My name is Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I've been in the toy industry for over 20 years, and I've made a couple videos now about play patterns and how kids engage with toy product, and how when you design toys with that specific play pattern in mind, it's going to lead to more successful sales because a play pattern is based on an emotional connection. And when you are keeping the emotional connection in mind when designing any product, you're going to have more success. A lot of toys and a lot of products in general don't do this. They just tend to put out what worked last year in another color. But when you really dive deep and you understand, especially with toys, how the consumer, how kids are interacting with those toys, it's going to lead to a lot more success. But I'm going to take a different spin this time. Instead of talking about kids and I still need to do a kind of a video on the history of kids playing with toys because there's a whole other uh, kind of ball of wax there when you're looking back before we had modern toys and modern plastic and, you know, kids have played and needed to play for thousands of years, but we haven't had action figures and video games this whole time. But I'm not going to talk about kids in this video. In this video, I want to talk about people like me. And what I mean by that is the adult collector. The adult collector, the person, say, over the age of 25, that is not just buying toy product, but is ravenous about buying toy product, meaning it's displayed, it's organized, it's shelved, it's dusted, it's sometimes, you know, separated, like, you know, no, never the twain shall meet, you know, the, you, you're going to keep your, your rainbow Batman over here, and you're going to keep your Robins over here, and... You know, there, there's even different shelves and different glass separators keeping different toy lines apart. Why do we do this? Why engage in this behavior? We're adults, yet we're buying quote-unquote child product. But is it really child product? Is this product made for us? Sometimes you're collecting specifically by a character. Firestorm, in this example. Other times, it's just based on what you love and being able to express what you love in plastic form. And why is that? Why do adult collectors collect? And I want to go through a few of those reasons right now. So let's start off with this anthem, Collect Them All. This is sort of known as the, uh, the Toy Collector's Creed. And I think it came from the 1980s from quite a few different toy product. Specifically, Superpowers was one of the first to really say this, to literally say this at the top of what was called a cross sell, which showed all the other toys in the line. And even Star Wars had their famous Collect All 92, where you saw a cross sell of every single figure in the line. Cross sells have kind of gone away these days, but this was like the golden age of cross sells. And this is what's called a call to action, at least in the marketing industry. It's telling the consumer what to do. And the idea of collect them all, I think, has really special meaning to collectors. And for this reason, this is actually why I had done this campaign when I was at Mattel for Masters of the Universe Classics about the line ending, because it allowed collectors to feel like they indeed had every figure. It didn't mean the six-inch He-Man line was over, but the idea was to give at least a stopping point so that collectors could feel like they had everything. Another big thing is purchase power. And as adults, what I mean by that is we can go to Target, we can go to Walmart, we can buy anything we want because we're adults and we have an income and we have a job and we have control of our finances. When you're a child, you don't have this. You're basically limited to, shall we say, what you get for an allowance. And for the most part, this is going to be spent on junk food. And, you know, toys are down there on the list, but they're way down there at number six, right over video games and, uh, you know, transportation and eating out with friends. But, you know, toys are there. But for the most part, your toy purchases or your toy call it income, what's coming to you as toys is going to be limited by presents, meaning birthday parties, holidays, things like Easter, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, whatever holiday you might be celebrating that children get presents. And this means as a child, you might have a, a very nice robust collection of, say, Masters of the Universe figures. You may not have all of them, but you have a lot. 
fast forward to now and you know now we're all working adults and we have our computers and our ties and our our hair neatly trimmed so we could work at our desks but this gives us an income and now we have this freedom that we can buy things that mom dad gift givers couldn't get us and we could complete our collection so to finish that metaphor with the Masters of the Universe line, now you've got Masters of the Universe classics, which you can buy and you can get everything you want. You're no longer limited by your allowance or what you might get for your birthday. You can choose to spend your income on toys, and that is very, very empowering, for lack of a better word. The fact that you can choose to complete your collection. You know, you know the, the, that challenge of completing your collection is no longer in other people's hands. It's now in your control. And this feeling of control is a big part of why we collect. Because being able to collect them all to fulfill that call to action, called out on the cross cell, is almost like a zen-like moment for working adults. We can now fulfill that 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 promise or you know that call to action from when we were kids that you really you weren't going to be able to collect them all as a kid you know we're dependent on maybe you know getting a couple for your birthday now collecting them all doesn't just mean accomplishment but it's a sense of being calm it's a sense of relaxing yes they make toys for relaxing but personally for me i love staring at my toy collections knowing I have them all, knowing how complete my collection is, and I have a feeling some of the people watching this video, maybe you, have this same kind of feeling, that when you see your toy collection, when you see it on display in your man cave or your woman cave or whatever it is you call your toy room, it's a sense of zen. It gives you a feeling of comfort and a feeling of ease. And scientifically, this is because of dopamine and how it gets released in the brain. I'm not going to do a whole video about how dopamine works. You could YouTube that and learn about that on your own. But the point is this chemical produced and excreted in the brain does so and creates a feeling of happiness. And control is a big part of that. And a big part of control for action figures is articulation. And this is why articulation is very, very important in the adult action figure product. Let's take a look at this Spider-Man figure from 1984. This was the Mattel Secret Wars Spider-Man. He had, what, five points of articulation, arms, legs, and head. And basically, you know, that was it. You could pose him in, you know, limited ways, shall we say. Fast forward to what we have now with things like a super articulated Spider-Man. This was the very first super articulated Spider-Man when Toy Biz did this prior to launching Marvel Legends. And I love this Spider-Man figure. It's one of my favorites. It's not just because it's done in kind of the Eric Larson style, who's one of my favorite artists, but because you can pose this Spider-Man in almost any way you want. He even has articulated fingers. And before this figure, there really weren't that many action figures that had this level of articulation, especially not a Spider-Man figure. Now, compare this to watching a Spider-Man movie or any movie. I mean, it can be, you know, Spider-Man or Battleship Potemkin. doesn't matter. The point is, watching a movie is what's called a passive experience. You are sitting in a seat, usually a darkened theater, staring up at a screen. This is honestly similar to books or comic books. When you are sitting and reading or watching, with either one, you are in a passive form of entertainment versus action figures and toys are an active form of entertainment. And this is why articulation is so important. So a specific adult collector figure like this Captain America figure from Bandai with alternate heads and alternate hands and tons of accessories is extremely empowering because it allows the adult collector to pose Cap exactly the way they want. You could change it every day. Every day he could be in a different pose. Or you could pick the pose that you love the most and keep him like that. That is why action figure collecting is empowering for the adult collector. The articulation level that we have today allows the adult collector to express their love for pop culture, for whatever they want, in the way they want. And I'll go out on a limb here and say there's a good chance most toy collectors, most adult collectors, don't have a whole bunch of these. Maybe you do. I don't. I was not a sports kid. 
and I don't have a room full of shiny gold trophies. But I have a room full of X-Men action figures. And to me, that is a trophy. That is the mission accomplished. Our action figures are our trophies. They create a sense of winning because when you have the entire team or the entire squadron or you know whatever it is, you feel a sense of accomplishment because you it, you know, it sometimes takes years to put together an action figure team as they're slowly released by one or more companies. But when you can finally put that whole team together on your shelf, that's a trophy. That's no different than a trophy for winning you know a basketball tournament. And that's why it's so important that toy companies do complete those teams, do complete those sets. Because when you don't finish a team or a set, like if you're recreating all the figures from a vintage line, it leaves a big hole and you can never have that trophy. So at the end of the day, why do adult collectors collect? Well, it makes us happy. It makes us happy because it gives us a sense of control, a sense of accomplishment. We now, as adults, can buy the toys that we couldn't get as kids that were sort of denied us. And at the end of the day, it's a hobby. It's no different than playing sports or cooking or, or watching sports or you know, exercise, needlepoint, you name it. Toy collecting is a legitimate hobby, and it makes us happy. And it's what we like doing in our spare time. And hey, of course, there's always, uh, as Frankie said, he who dies with the most toys wins. Hey, is this true? Probably. Is it going to be me? Probably not. But I love collecting action figures, and you probably do too if you've been watching this. And I hope this video had a little insight on why we all do this. If you like this video and you'd care to subscribe or give me a thumbs up, I would be most appreciated. Uh, Tiff, most appreciative. And, uh... Yeah, thanks. Keep watching and I'll make more videos like this. Leave your comments below and I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. Let me know what else you'd like to hear me talk about. Thanks, guys.